Hi my fam, welcome to today's video. This video is both highly requested as well as something that's been on my list to film for absolutely ever. All through the months of November and December, I did a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one makeup workshops with you guys virtually and I realized that a lot of people were getting their base not necessarily wrong um, or based on products or what they were using, more based on techniques. And I realized that it was high time that I sit down and film this video. So today, as the title may have already told you, is going to be a conversation about how to get that flawless base and one thing I want to specifically mention here is that for me the idea of the perfect base the perfect foundation is when your skin still looks like skin I don't necessarily love it when somebody says hey your foundation looks great to me the compliment really really truly is I mean of course that's a compliment as well but to me the compliment really really is when someone says your skin's looking fantastic today um, and I hope that by the end of this video you have some valuable takeaways so let's just dive right into it. Okay first things first I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a pro tip a smooth canvas is everything it is very 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 underrated so making sure you constantly take care of your skin making sure you take care of your facial hair are very very important factors you could have great skin in general but if you don't do your morning and nighttime skincare routines which could be very very basic also it could just be sunscreen moisturizer or just a serum and moisturizer at night absolutely anything but just the basics of what your skin needs is super important when it comes to facial hair i think that it just creates a really smooth easy canvas on the face you could just take care of your brows your upper lip if you are someone that's open to derma planing on your face that's another option as well i also personally shave my sideburns i shuffle between shaving with a facial razor and using a trimmer so really whatever works for you but ever since i started taking my facial hair off like everywhere even more regularly over the last few years i have seen the smoothness and ease with which my makeup and even my skincare just kind of feels on my face. It just makes a huge difference. Number two, and I'm sure you've heard this a whole lot of times, prepping. I cannot stress enough on how important a good moisturizer is for your skin. Now, if you're someone who has oily skin and you feel like, no, my skin is oily enough, I don't really need a moisturizer, girl you do need a moisturizer maybe you shouldn't opt for a cream based moisturizer opt for a gel based moisturizer opt for something light is what i'm trying to say that's totally fine as well especially even the dry skin girls i want to kind of put it out there and tell you that if you're in the summer or if you're just in generally in a really hot or humid place maybe don't opt for a cream based moisturizer opt for a gel based one so you don't sweat that easily and that'll also make your makeup last relatively longer I cannot stress how important it is to take care of your skin. Make sure you go around the areas around your mouth, your laugh lines, around the nose. Make sure you go all the way to your chin and your jaw as well. You don't want part of your face to have a smooth base and then the rest of it to feel kind of patchy at the time of application. Use your fingers. I think that that's a great way to go about using a moisturizer because the warmth of your fingers will really go over and apply the product really smoothly on your skin as well. Number three, and I know a lot of people skip this one and I really like the way Nikki Tutorial says this so I'm going to use her line and give her credit for saying not to prime is a crime which is so true I especially if you're someone who complains about makeup not lasting on their face please prime your face I feel like the minute you use primer your foundation goes on really differently really beautifully once again I will say make sure to pay special attention to the areas around your nose around your laugh lines your mouth just go all over your face exactly like you did with your moisturizer and all the same surface areas that you're about to go on with your foundation um I know that a lot of people are like primer mm, daily mm. there's a lot of like two-in-one products out there figure what works for you uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think that's yet to discover that we can all find together I'll try and leave a whole lot of recommendations for you down below in the description section I'll tag some on this video I love the new feature on YouTube I personally feel like if you're looking for that perfect skin look primers 
are a game changer and if you are someone who hasn't tried a primer yet please try it and let me know how it goes for you down below in the comments come back on this video whenever you do try it and let me know or slide into my dms whatever works for you i do agree and understand that primers for daily wear may not be that viable if you live a busy life and have to get to school or college or work or whatever on time not school i don't have those many young viewers to be honest youtube statistics tell me all my viewers are mostly above 25 so if you have to get to work on time but try and slide it in whenever you can especially if you're doing one of those days where you are going from like let's say you know desk to dinner kind of a situation your makeup will really last a lot longer okay now we're going to talk about foundation i cannot stress enough how important it is to choose a foundation that works for your skin type one of the most common mistakes i found in um the wear fam members who i did my one on one makeup workshops with was that they followed either me or another influencer and just bought products being recommended but they didn't realize that either you know they have different skin types from the influencer so even though i am an influencer and i have been for over a decade i am going to tell you to not blindly follow anything i am a dry skin girl my daily products will not completely work for you the same way they work for me if you are an oily skin girl you know what i mean so keep that filter in mind anytime you are taking recommendations so when you're choosing a foundation look at coverage look at skin type uh and then of course you look at skin tone and find a shade accordingly so my favorite thing right now about foundations is that i love sheer to medium foundations don't get me wrong i love a good full coverage foundation day but i'm only gravitating towards those for my more shoot days i love for skin to look like skin i run away from anything that makes my face look cakey so the one i'm actually using very often right now is the ilia one it's the skin serum tint and it comes with spf 40 nothing in this video is sponsored just putting it out there um and i feel like just the way the serum finish is on my skin serum serum i know different people say it different ways um is very very nice and unique i feel like again i want to say that i'm someone that's not looking for a lot of coverage and thankfully does not need a lot of coverage but there are some really great medium coverage and even full coverage foundations out there the trick with foundations is to start with a little and then build up if you need more it's only once you really truly get the hang of how much you need and you like the overall finish even after like let's say 5 hours 8 hours depending on your wear time that you can directly go in and pump up with three pumps if that's what's working for you different things work for different people so i also want to put that out there now with foundations the biggest technique question i get from you guys is blender or brush and the answer for me in particular is always brush i'm going to tell you why um i'm not saying this because the brush is mine if i'm going to reveal a secret over here the blender is also mine i have been testing out verified um beauty blenders for about a year and a half two years at this point the reason i will always say brush is because i don't think enough people take care of their blenders it's really really important to switch up your blenders every one to 3 months if you are using it regularly i don't think enough people wash their blenders as regularly as they should um and the thing with blenders unlike unlike brushes is that it could really hold your bacteria and be causing you a lot of skin problems inflammations acne and what not if you're not taking all the precautions the thing with brushes is that they're easier to clean and while i'm a fan of using my fingers when it comes to moisturizer and even primer i'm not someone who likes hand physical touch contact when it comes to you know when you go into the color part of cosmetics just for hygiene purposes so i'm a huge fan of brushes what i have over here that i just mentioned i'm going to quickly give it a little shout out because it is a product i'm very proud that we have been able to create is our number 5 um brush from verified it is an angled brush so really gets into all the corners the crevices applies really 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 flawless foundation whatever the coverage that you might be using is i will still repeat to use a little bit and then build up if you are someone that says okay you know what i like the way the brush is giving me <clears throat> a finish but i still want that little blender feel take your beauty blender and just dab it at the end of your foundation that's totally fine if you want that little blender touch i understand you can do that after you do your application for just a little finishing touch by After we do foundation we always do concealer which is the second last step I'm going to talk about today because we're talking about the flawless base. 
and I don't think it's possible to do your foundation without concealer because a lot of us do have either dark circles or graying. I have deep set eyes and grey on the under eyes and it's taken me um, a journey of my own kind to really be, be comfortable with it, be, you know, just embrace it. I've tried under eye fillers, it's not something I want to go back to and I do have lip fillers and chin fillers so in case you're new on this channel we do talk about a lot of things beauty really openly very candidly but and while I might go back for a lip and chin filler the under eye fillers I don't think I'm going back for anytime soon if I change my mind I'll let you know so the thing with concealers is that I feel like less is more that's kind of where again i'm at of course i'm going to give you the caveat that if you're using a full coverage foundation go in with a full coverage concealer or go in with a heavier hand but i like to focus on my concealer in the inner corner a little bit on the outer corner and blend and then if i feel like i need to go in again with some more product i go in only on the inner corner i don't add more product to the outer corner because when you're tapping and blending it'll all just mush up really beautifully the main tip I have to give you over here is while you're doing this, try and look up. Your under eye lines and under eye area in general will fold the more you look down. If you're anything like me, like for example, I have deep set eyes, I have grey under eyes and I do have fine lines under my eyes which I saw completely go away when I had my under eye fillers temporarily. This is like in 2020, 21, I can't remember when I got them done but I'll leave a link into that video over here and down below. Um, I do feel like the more I look up and blend my concealer, the better it looks. And I try to keep looking up when I go ahead and I'll go into the last step, which is setting it in place. The Verified IRL Paris Filter Airbrush Powder is obviously my holy grail. We do have a loose powder version of it, which is what I used on my under eyes today. If you are into baking, you can go ahead and leave some loose powder on your under eyes while you do everything else. Or you can just set it down in place. We have a compact version of it as well. This is my brand verified. Again, in case you're new here on this channel, same brand that I have the brush from. And um, both of them come with a puff. Our compact version is not talc free, whereas our loose powder version is a talc free product. I'll leave these products linked in over here. So our website has all the information on ingredients and expiry and how to use and that kind of stuff, inclusions, everything. So I always make sure to set my under eyes. Setting your under eyes is a little bit of a complete non-negotiable for me. Reason being, when you are looking up, looking down, blinking, which is something we do involuntarily, your makeup, even if it's less and not more, is going to land up creasing. So to really try and optimize and have it move to the less possible extent, a good setting powder is a must. My baby over here is very, 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 very finely milled. And even though it's translucent, it works just as well for very light to very deep skin tones. I really, truly have tested this one across um, everything I could. So I go ahead and set it down. Now in my case, because I have dry skin, I don't always go ahead and set my whole face down with my IRL Paris filter. But if you have oily skin, I would recommend it all the time. However, if I know I'm going to step out of the house and uh, I live in Mumbai, it's really hot and humid all through the year. And when we say our winter is winter, a lot of non-Mumbai people obviously make fun of it. I get it. But it's winter for us, guys. Um, I make it a point to have the IRL Paris filter all over my face if I know I'm going to leave the house. If I'm just sitting and filming, I may not always apply it. Um, but I will go ahead and apply it if I'm going to leave the house. Just going to put that out there. I feel like that little sweat that we get around these areas or on the chin, laugh lines, close to the hair lines can be really icky. This is a product you can apply in the morning on your moisturizer and sunscreen as well, even if you're not wearing any makeup. I love it that much. I tend to layer it up about twice, once when I'm setting my base and then once at the end of my makeup routine as I have done today. So um, that's how I make sure I get the flawless base. Just going to reiterate really quickly, skincare, prepping, priming, foundation, concealer and setting it down. Six steps that will take you less than six minutes hopefully once you get the hang of it and um, just keep these little little techniques in mind don't drag try and tap as much as you can build your product up from less 
and then going on to more and uh, i hope that some of you will go ahead practice a little bit in the mirror today and come back and leave comments on this video and let me know how it went the where fam comment shout out for today goes to user ares i really hope you guys have your real names on your handles sometime soon so i can get to know you as well i hope 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 that this video has been helpful to you i apologize a little bit delayed on having a slightly weird hair day and also i'm just recovering from a cold and cough so my voice is a little bit weird but i hope you'll come back for more hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed this video and turn those bell notifications on so you get alerts every time i upload a new video and also feel free to leave your beauty request videos down below in the comments section for me i love you all so much i'll see you in the next one Bye.